All right, it may be fair to say that this past week was a bit of a rough one for Texas Governor Rick Perry. First, he delivers a widely criticized performance in Thursday night's GOP presidential debate. Then, Herman Cain soundly beats him in the Florida straw poll. The Perry campaign appears to be faltering just a bit. What's going on? Joining us now to talk about it, Ford O'Connell, a former director for Rural Outreach for John McCain's presidential campaign. Christy Setzer joins us, former spokesperson for Vermont, Governor Howard Dean. Good to see you both. Christy, let me start with you. Sure. Uh, the LA Times called the straw poll a startling embarrassment for Perry. And in fact, here's their explanation for it. We'll quote. Interviews with delegates indicate that a far more likely reason for Perry's defeat a subpar performance in the Florida debate two days earlier in which he fumbled answers and alienated social conservatives by calling mm -hmm. critics of his immigration record heartless. Several delegates, in fact, said they were disappointed in, in Perry's debate performance. You know, Christy, did he unwittingly hit the self-destruct button? I think he may have. Look, this was a brutal, um, possibly disqualifying week for Rick Perry whether it was his disastrous debate performance or whether it was losing two straw polls, one in the Midwest and one in the South, where he absolutely should have performed better than he did. He should have won this one hands down. Um, it looks like we're getting to a place where he may soon be cast aside, much like Michelle Bachman was. You know, Ford, Republicans already were harboring some second thoughts about Rick Perry over his First of all, the executive order mandating the HPV vaccine and then his incendiary remarks about Social Security. Uh, but, you know, during the debate, it was his justification for taxpayer funded in-state tuition for illegals that became arguably a polarizing event. Here's what a, a member of Frank Luntz's focus group had to say. Take a listen. The things that I'm tired of is being told that I'm heartless and being a conservative, right. and it's unacceptable. A lot of people said that, uh, Ford. Was that, in a way, a defining moment that spells maybe the beginning of the end of the Perry surge? Well, I think the honeymoon with Rick Perry is certainly over, and the Florida straw poll should be a wake-up. He's got to get his act together. He's got to do a far better in debate prep because his showings have been terrible. And he has to more effectively message certain key issues to conservatives, like his stance on uh, in-state tuition for uh, legal immigrants. My advice to Rick Perry is, look, this is recoverable, but you've got a very narrow window to do it. You've got probably until about the Las Vegas debate on uh, October 18th to really clean up your act. My advice is, look, you got to reach out to Mark McKenna and Dana Perino because you got to get better messaging and your debate prep has got to get light years better than it is right now. Yeah, you know, Christy, it wouldn't be the first time that a front runner imploded, and I'm showing my age here, but let's go back. And I remember it like it was yesterday, 1972, Ed Muskie. I think we have the video of this. He self-destructed during a, a seemingly tearful news conference in New Hampshire. We don't have the video, but there's Ed Muskie. He later had to withdraw because of it. Then there was the infamous photo of Michael Dukakis with kind of a dopey grin and a huge helmet that tanked literally his bid for president in 1988. Ironically, though, perhaps the most famous self-destruct was a guy by the name of George Romney, Mitt's dad who made that regrettable comment that he'd been brainwashed by military leaders into supporting the Vietnam War. He went from front runner to loser almost overnight. Wanted to ask you about that, but I got to interrupt myself and I apologize for this. Want to go to New York City. The news conference now.